great to have you back with us. Uh, in the last episode, we discussed about the area driving the demand for data science and AI skills in India and the key skills that are in demand within DS and AI. Continuing our conversation today with Sirisha, Jitendra and Praveen, we will discuss more about the challenges faced while hiring and the talent pool complementing L&D activities along with the top, top five priority skills for people coming in from other adjacent roles. So coming back to the question that we have over here in this section, what are the typical challenges uh, faced while hiring? Now, this is more on the hiring side, you know, uh, you know, by looking at people. Now, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, majority of the reports and even uh, the report that we have just published, we see that, you know, mm, the executives are uh, talking about uh, a demand supply gap. Now, obviously at a higher level, there there is actually, you know, more demand than what uh, the ecosystem is able to supply. Uh, but uh, individually, your 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 inputs will be highly appreciated over here. So how how do you see when you are hiring? Maybe we can start with Sarisha and then uh, move move on to Jitin. Oh, what are the uh, overall uh, you know challenges you know uh, which you face? I mean, or your managers face? The hiring yeah, people. Um, the big um, trouble or, or problem that I think we all personally face in this industry right now is authenticity, talent, mm. skills. All of that is um, absolutely critical and I'm sure we'll talk about that in a lot more detail. But um, to go back to what Praveen was uh, referring to earlier, right? So there is, um, everybody basically does a three-month course or a two-month course or a crash course or whatever that is and starts calling themselves a data scientist. Um, so so I guess uh, if I have to call out two important things, one will be the authenticity. Um, yeah, doing a a project that nobody actually cares about and using some complex architecture just to prove your technical skills no data scientist is supposed to do. Um, any standard implementation that's actually been productionized for a customer, even though the architecture is not complex, that's absolutely what we're looking for. We are here mm -hmm. to solve problems. We are not We are not in the academic world. That's the authenticity aspect of it. Um, uh, so hopefully the hype will do some good and, and, and bring some uh, yeah, clarity within the people's uh, minds when they're going and attending these interviews. And the other thing that I would actually look out for, um, which is lacking, um, again, that's something that we were touching upon earlier as well, is the breadth. Um, yeah, if you are saying I'm a data scientist and you say I don't know how to do SQL or, uh, you know, I don't know that I need data to be given in a format that I will be able to use, then uh, he or she is not doing justice to the role, right? So the breadth um, and authenticity, I would call out these two things as typical challenges that uh, we're facing, at least at a screening level. Um, yeah, I'm sure the others can talk about the tech capabilities in a lot more detail. Jitendra, your take uh, on this? No, I think uh, I'll agree with uh, Srisa on this, uh, that, uh, I mean, people are uh, faking a lot of things and, and that becomes really a hiring challenge and sometimes we, we end up uh, uh, putting wrong people in wrong job kind of a thing, right? Because you really... So basically, you fake to the core and we couldn't figure that out uh, in, in the interview because in half an hour, 45 minutes, that's all yeah. we can we can do. Uh, so that's the one I think it's, it's uh, relevant for them as well as for industry because both the parties, in fact, all the stakeholders are getting uh, disappointed in the journey, right? So he will lose his job maybe three, six months down the line when the, the things will come out, when he's, uh, he's put in on the task, the things will come out, right? I mean, some of them are able to narrowly escape, but Many of them are facing casualty. We are losing face in front of customer and the customer yeah. is a disappointed uh, customer for us, right? So I think that is the urgent and important thing. Uh, at the same time, we all, all acknowledge and that's where probably authenticity uh, matters, right? You don't need to tell that uh, you are a 10 years experience guy and hence you have a 10 years data science experience. We know that mm -hmm. this industry itself is five, seven years old. Few mm -hmm. of the libraries which you are talking about, we know that came only five, seven years back. Then how did you work on this 10 years back? So. We all understand how this industry has evolved, what what was the right profile uh, 10 years back and it's absolutely okay that you are into this space for only two years, be honest about it, right? And and, and that's how we are placing our bet in a sense, uh, we are nurturing the talent because we know that there is no skill uh, base available because this, in, this segment is new and as companies doing internal training, upskilling and all that, right? So, so there is a there is a acute shortage out there for sure. No, no denying of that fact that academia is not able to produce the right talent, and mm -hmm. and and naturally so because if the the I'm I'm little sympathetic to my professors back in 20, 20 years back when I was in college, right? I mean, you know what government is paying in academia, or if you are in a government college or even 
for for that matter private uh, university they are regulated by aict and you need to be a phd or uh, degree holder to be a professor to have a decent uh, uh, thing there so even if they, you are you have interest to go and teach probably the, the bureaucratic setup is not allowing many of the top talent to go and, and teach there and as there is a there is a talent i mean i would say a shortage of good teacher in in this space for sure okay so there are institutes who have launched the program but they don't have the right people to deliver it and and rightly so because industry is paying the the salary on a different scale academia is paying on a different scale so unless you we do something around that which is not in our control as such but as a problem statement yes this is definitely a concern i was talking to iit uh, professor as well very recently and and, and the same thing right how do you uh, pull the, the 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 knowledge bank from the academia into industry there is no formal channel which is definitely inhibiting uh, or some good work could have been done uh, in on, on that side to to uh, let's say solve the the problem of supply side so we do have a supply mm. side problem mm. we don't have a definite answer right away unless we feed into the the, the supply side and then enable the insurance academia to produce or ready to use semi finish we don't expect them to be a uh, ready to deploy but yeah semi finish also will do the job probably we are not even getting there so that's the way probably i'll i'll, I'll put it uh, one day yeah, I really wish they watch this <laughs> and get the <laughs> point about their uh, the red tip things. I mean, but still, private universities are a bit lenient on this front, and of course, they are getting the um, uh, right outcome because of that. They are hiring somebody who can do that job and not somebody who is having a tag or a label. Uh, that happens in uh, the particular government uh, institutes. That needs to change, but I, I don't know. I mean, the policies are changing, but uh, I don't know how long this will take. So, so just to add, Pruvin, I think uh, that's the real maybe crux of the issue that academia is not able to allow this framework and industry needs it. And that's where the three months, six months courses yeah. are mushrooming up in the industry ah, where you have a I, place for ah, do whatever yes, you like. Yes. <laughs> okay, you, you just told the words from my mouth like... Uh, <laughs> there are there are you know there are mohalla clinics in delhi so there are mohalla classes in uh, my exactly <laughs> every nook and corner they have a data science class and uh, they are flourishing like anything and as, as Sirisha said like uh, the authenticity there are a uh, lot of malpractices being uh, adopted by these guys they tell you that i will give you experience certificate they are creating your form 16s as a data scientist Correct. That's a different story altogether. I came across such people, but that, that that's one of the big challenge. And people are going not for learning; they are going for certificate. Mm. Okay. They want to show that, but uh, they can get through the screening, but they will fail in the interview. That, that's one big challenge. Yeah, the industry is. Yeah. Through. Yeah, and Bandev, maybe one thing that I would want to add is, yeah, there's a lot of things that are not in our control, but I think as industry. Um, there is a lot of enthusiasm because we actually need yeah. to get the work done right so there are professors of practice people are going people like us are going and teaching in universities these days so there's a lot of collaboration that's happening universities actually build that rigor i think that's good um, as long as there is collaboration i think as industry we also need to be a lot more open to jitendra's point we don't need finished products right we are we should be willing to mm. bet on people that have the intent uh, more importantly, we have to take our internship programs a lot more seriously. Uh, there are going to be some really good candidates that are coming out. Um, I don't think the uh, students of this day and age have to complain about college curriculum professors and all of that. MIT classes are open for everybody to listen to. Um, so that shouldn't be the concern. But we as industry should be a lot more open, take our internship programs a lot more seriously, give them actual project work um, and not brush it off. Um, and and put our skin in the game, right? We are building the future talent pool here. It is not readily available. We should be willing to take that uh, punt. I think all the senior leaders have to contribute um, and go and teach. Um, all the senior leaders should ensure that their teams are um, well provisioned, well stocked, if you will, uh, to be able to nurture the uh, younger talent that is coming in. Um, and be open to their suggestions and their ways of working as well. Um, we're doing a good job already. I think we will get there. Um, the nature will take its course, but I think we should put our force behind it as well. No, I think I think Sri Shavala just uh, you go thirty seconds Monday only. I think uh, the the wheel is already uh, uh, turning. I think uh, already companies like us and many other companies are reaching out to IITs and IITs of the world. 
and as Isha said, we are now ramping up our uh, internship program because you hardly pay. I mean, I I spoke to IIT director and and uh, the message was that hey, uh, I mean, a chody, sorry, uh, and he said that hey, why are you going to pay them because already government is paying them as a part of their MTech program. So the government is already giving them a scholarship, so you don't need to pay. You just take them for a year. They have a, a one year project and then you engage them in meaningful stuff. I think that's more than enough. So I think there is a framework in place. We just need to maybe uh, align a little bit our business priorities, but it's not a very cost heavy thing. And, and all of us will, will benefit out of it. If you engage them uh, for a year, I think it's any day going to be better than as Praveen said, Muhalla Clinic of Data Science, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we'll bridge yeah, the gap uh, very easily. Yeah. Moving on to the final question. So I'd like to start with Praveen. So, uh, okay, so we have talked about the challenges, the industry, the academia, the lack of uh, teachers who are really doing good stuff and the um, exchange of, you know, uh, 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 you know, good teachers from the uh, academia into the industry and vice versa. Um, one way of looking at, you know, bridging this talent gap, Praveen, which has come out in our interviews is the reskilling aspect of it or the upskilling aspect of it. Now, of course, there are, you know, all these uh, companies, uh, online training companies, EdTech, platforms uh, which are really um, uh, you know doing a lot of work I mean we have talked about the efficiency or efficacy of those programs but internally uh, within your organization I'm sure uh, you also have your LD programs uh, which encourage people from other uh, IT streams to who are you know willing to join data science as a career of course who have the aptitude and some idea so how do how do you see this particular thing how effective is this yeah um, I don't have the stats or numbers in hand, but uh, qualitatively speaking, I think uh, they are the one big good source of talent uh, you should uh, look for. Because uh, mm. there are a lot of things they need, don't need to be taught. They know how to program or do coding. They know how the business works. They know how a project life cycle goes. They know mm. a lot of methodologies. And the biggest thing, they uh, know some good domain. It is just to get train them upon uh, how to read the data, how to uh, understand the story the data is trying to tell. That is something they need to be trained on, like some maths and stuff they need to be trained on. And some new coding, I mean, coding in machine learning is nothing difficult. I mean, that is the simplest coding I have ever seen. You can build a whole model, like four or six or five lines, maybe. So uh, they are one good source because uh, the soft skills are with them. You just need to train them on the science part of the things, uh, as I said earlier. So they, they should be uh, looked at as one of the good uh, uh, raw talent, which can be utilized uh, really good. Jitendra, your perspectives on that at WNS? No, I, think I, I, I agree with Praveen. In fact, uh, at WNS, we do have a, a big program. We call it uh, different uh, uh, for different skill set. We call it differently, but we have a program called Velocity where we train the people for almost like eight, nine months. And as Praveen said, it's primarily targeted for people who wish to shift their uh, basically career profile, right? So they, they are in a, let's say, uh, visualization role power. They are working on Power BI, Tableau, click of the, the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then they have the domain knowledge, as Pruvin said, uh, they are a smart chap. Uh, they are, they are, they talk to customer day in, day out. So they have everything else minus, I mean, everything else uh, other than the, the data science part, right? Or the, the top end of the analytics part, right? So, so that's definitely a, a big winner for us because they are internally sourced, we control them on a day-to-day -day basis. And complementing that with the, the in industry, I mean, internship program is really definitely uh, helping a lot. And as you talked about adjacency, skills adjacency, right? So let's say somebody who has done a lot of data engineering work, but he's, let's say he's limited to only ETL side of the world. I mean, it's very easy for, okay. for that resource to become a ML ops engineer because then he understands the data landscape. He understands the data tool. He just needs to pick up a little bit of a application management and deployment side of the thing. And he could be a good DevOps engineer or MLOps engineer for us, right? Uh, uh, same goes for somebody who is who is into business, doing visualization and, and reporting and dashboarding for the customer. But he could be a business analyst uh, very quickly, right? Because he has the, the domain, which otherwise difficult to learn, right? So, so there are a lot of adjacency, which is helping us to, to basically upgrade them into a newer role. Uh, and, and and that's where the the internal LND program is 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 a very very uh, powerful uh, I would say accelerator for us, which is allowing us to bridge the gap. Of course, we need to do a little more or or, or some way to go. 
but definitely it's a good start out there Srisha, before uh, you uh, give your uh, insights on this, I just like to add to the question, which is like if you were to uh, pick up three or four roles. Of course, Praveen and uh, Jitendra have spoken about you know the adjacencies, uh, but uh, what are the top four or five roles which you think have a you know better propensity to transform or tra- you know uh, you know uh, pivot into a data science role? Like currently, who are handling some other thing, uh, you know some other aspects of IT. So if there are in roles which which are better attuned to move into data science easier to sure. train them um, for example absolutely again um jitendra i think um, alluded to that already so if you are a visualization resource um with yeah but but a precursor to this right um, you could have all those adjacent skills but you if you don't develop an interest in math if you mm-hmm. don't develop an in, interest in stats um if you don't want to spend additional effort and self learn uh, you will not become a good data science person eventually you'll um, yeah you will end up having an imposter syndrome very very quickly um so the precursor is you should you should be willing to spend that extra effort on math and stats having said that if you have that baseline then yes if you are a visualization resource uh, there is no reason why you can't move um uh, into the adjacent data science world um if you are a devops resource there is no reason why you can't do ml ops data ops um if you are already doing um yeah there was a role called operations research at some point in time mm-hmm. um if you were an or um building on top of that and that was an extremely high end role right it was not yeah. they were the data scientist before the data scientist term got coined um so if you, you were doing uh, or then you should absolutely look at doing computer vision and nlp or whatever is the fancy today um so yeah visualization devops good data engineering resources um anybody who's done um six sigma lean lean manufacturing and and things like that there's no reason why you don't have the rigor and you can't uh, latch on to data science roles uh, but like uh, like i said math stats good programming background Uh, an absolute interest in the business um, there is nothing that uh, can be taught there you have to genuinely understand what the problem is um, and it's a lot of self study um, and people have to realize that it is not a shortcut um, yeah you can go to all those 3 month courses 6 months courses uh, till cows come to yeah you can do all of that uh, but then if you are not genuinely interested in solving a problem if you are not willing to put in that efforts to understand what you are trying to build a model for uh you'll fall flat so if you want to be a good data scientist yeah pick up math stats sql programming language and then get a bit bit of a breadth you're wrong so so yeah. just like add that. add bandhe yes. on on what uh, srisa said i think let's put it in a context right so so we all talked about data to basically to train the model but the reality of life is also that all the i mean most of the enterprises are basically hooked to either snowflake of the world sap or acorn or on your sales force and all that right so it's it's not easy to move data out of a given platform and then take it to a newer platform and then do whatever you like right so so what i'm trying to convey here is that industries consuming data in in form of data insight to machine learning through the native platform so oracle gives you that capability sap gives you that capability sales force gives you that capability and so is with every other data platform right so there are people who are working in this environment already if they mm-hmm. learn little bit of uh, ml nuances probably the the platform allows you to quickly run the data science or uh, a job within that environment and you are the best person to do that right because putting a, a stand alone data science guy who has never seen how oracle works it will be difficult for him to pick up the the environment right so again it's not a very high end new model or algorithm development work but that's a, a big chunk of work out there in the industry right you need people with native yeah. platform experience and that's a perfect adjacency for them so i just wanted to make sure that because there's a big chunk of people out there who has worked on oracle sap of the world and these mm-hmm. platforms have now built very advanced analytics machine learning capability that could be a perfect match for them thank you and about the point uh, it's just you about programming uh, i have slightly different opinion uh, by programming you did not be really an expert programmer you should be able to understand at least the algorithms the data structures how the flow, things flow uh, because syntax is um, you can always find i mean that's my uh, way of 
chart. And I, I'm a bad programmer, in fact, <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> syntaxes and writing codes. But I can figure out what needs to be done. You need to understand uh, the, the what we can say, the process or the uh, algo or the flow of the data. Syntax is absolutely, important. yeah, absolutely. I mean, my only point was you should know enough to yes, code yes. it well. Correct. You don't need to know the nuances. Yeah. yeah. You you combine that with uh, the resourcefulness. The rest, the rest of the correct. team. You are done. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. And I think we have covered all the questions. Uh, thank you so much for the participation. Thanks, uh, Sirisha, Jitendra and Praveen for sharing such interesting insights about this discussion. Uh, that's it from our side in this final episode of Tech Talks, the state of data science and AI skills in India. Stay tuned for more insightful discussions happening in the Indian tech industry with NASCOM Insights YouTube channel. Please like, share, subscribe. Till then, it's goodbye from everyone. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thank you so much.